Welcome to an overview of how the Sciences Library can help you with your project writing assignments in Foundations of Biology Lab. My name is Lori Neuerberg, she, her, hers. I'm one of the Sciences Librarians here. The others are Conrad Ben Dixon and Leo Clowerty. All of us are available to do research consultations with you to help you with library research. You can email us if you would like to set up an appointment. We've created a library guide that will help you with your writing assignments in Foundations of Biology Lab. The URL is guides.lib.uiowa.edu slash foundations. For your writing assignments, it's important to know that the writing style is different for that your lab report than for essays and for creative writing. Writing lab reports and scientific articles requires giving complex information as clearly and simply as possible and giving a lot of information in only a few pages. In science, it's traditional to use the passive voice to explain your method section in order to keep the focus on the science rather than the person behind it. It's important to be clear in scientific writing. One easy way to accomplish clarity is to look at your sentences carefully. Anytime you have a sentence that becomes a run-on sentence, it becomes too long and messy, you can break this run-on sentence down into separate shorter sentences. I found this example of a run-on sentence and it is broken down into three separate sentences for clarity. It's important to be concise. The lab report, lab report format is structured to give a lot of information to the reader without taking a lot of the reader's time. It's important to revise your work to delete any redundant text. There is no need to say the same thing multiple times. In this example, there's no need to say many of the rules of heredity you can just say his findings established rules of heredity known as Mendelian inheritance. And be purposeful with your writing. Does it tell the reader everything that happened in a way they can understand? You can revise anything that is extraneous. Here the word very is extraneous. It doesn't add any meaning meaning and the pronoun their offspring is vague so it can be revised to specify. So you can uh, tighten up your sentences to make them more clear. You can omit unnecessary words. This slide links to a whole list of examples of unnecessary words in scientific style and format. Some examples are absolutely essential and results in the foreseeable future. You can just say essential, result, future, and then your writing will not be so wordy. In lab reports, it's important to be aware of passive versus active voice. As much as possible, you will want to use an active voice because it's direct and it's engaging for the reader. However, when you describe your experiment in your method section, you will use the passive voice to redirect the focus from yourself to your experiment. Now it's your turn to revise a sentence. You could delete from this sentence number one and discoveries, number two more and more, and number three in himself. If you need time to think about it, you can pause the video. And if you chose one, two, and three, you are correct. You could delete all of these words and your writing would be more clear and more concise for a lab report. Now we're going to show you a few of the library databases available to you. These databases will help you find credible articles and books. Everything is free to you. Even if we do not have a book or the full text of an article, you can get it for free through an interlibrary loan request. The URL for that is lib.uiowa.edu slash services slash ILLDD. And the library databases are indexed with subject headings, which makes them easy to search and they are well organized so you can filter and sort your results easily. The library has subscriptions to over a thousand databases. We're going to focus on these four today. 
InfoHawk Plus is actually the library catalog, so it tells you whether we have a book or not. Similar to the other databases listed, you can also find journal articles in it. PubMed, Web of Science, and Scopus are scholarly databases and great places to find credible journal articles. I'm going to show different search strategies now for each database, but know that most of these strategies can be used in all of the databases listed. Sometimes you want to do known item searching. If you find an article out on the web and hit a paywall, for example, then you can search the title of the article in InfoHawk Plus to see if our library holds the full text of the article. To do known item searching, it helps to use the advanced search of InfoHawk Plus. You can see the link to it in the screenshot on the left. You can choose to search the title field from the drop down box, which you can see in the screenshot on the right. Once you've done your search in InfoHawk Plus, you can look for the download PDF link. This will give you the full text of the article that you can save, email to yourself, or print out. This screenshot shows a keyword search in PubMed. PubMed is a good source for life sciences and biomedical literature. When you search by keyword, it helps to choose distinctive keywords to describe your topic. One strategy for searching is to start with a broad search and then use the filters on the left side and add additional keywords as needed to start narrowing down your search. Scopus is another database that contains scholarly literature that's nicely organized for you to find articles. This search is an example of Boolean searching. By default, most databases are connecting your keywords with AND so that you're getting results that include all of your keywords. If you know of synonyms for your search terms, then you can use OR to include both of these terms in your search results. In the example here, the search will find all articles that include treatment or therapy with the term CRISPR. This retrieves more articles than either CRISPR plus treatment or CRISPR plus therapy alone. Web of Science is another helpful database for finding scholarly articles. This screenshot shows how you can do proximity searching. Proximity searching is only something you can do in Scopus and Web of Science. If you have trouble finding articles on your topic that discuss your keywords as they relate to one another, then you can do proximity searching. This will find your keywords within a certain number of words of one another. In this example, we are finding the keyword hummingbirds within five words of the term evolution. Using proximity searching will narrow down your result list and can be helpful if you have difficulty finding relevant articles with simple searches. So now you can pause the video and think about which databases you plan to use. Uh, you could use choose one or you could choose more than one, that is up to you. Now we will move on to using the articles that you find in your writing assignment. It's important to cite the articles that you use. This gives credit to the authors who wrote the ideas in the articles. If you use ideas from an article without citing it, then it is plagiarism, which is academic misconduct. Besides avoiding plagiarism, citing articles gives background and context for your work, and the citation list gives, you, gives your readers a way to find more sources to read. When you write about an article in your lab report, you will list a citation in your reference list at the end of your paper and refer to the article with an in-text citation in the body of your paper. In your lab reports, you will be using CSE name year style for the citations. This is different than APA or MLA or other styles that you may have used in the past. There is an online citation quick guide with helpful examples, and there are additional examples on the library guide. This is an example of the CSE name year style for a print book with one author. The in-text citation must have the author and the year of publication. And there are two ways to write the in-text citation. It can be done using the author as the subject of the sentence with the publication year in parentheses, 
or it can be done with the author of and year of publication, both inside the parentheses. The end citation that appears in the list at the end of your paper has the author, year of publication, title of the book, publication, place, and publisher. The title of the book is in sentence case with only the first word capitalized. There is no comma between the author, last name, and first initial. The different elements of the citation are separated by a period. And if your book does not say what edition it is, then you do not have to include any edition information. A citation for an electronic book includes all of the same elements as for the printed book, plus the URL and the date that you access the resource. It is common for journal articles to have multiple authors. This example has 10 or more authors. In the in-text citation, you would just give the first author's last name and then et al. And then you list the first 10 names in the end citation at the end of the paper. And then if there are any more than 10, you also say et al. A website is different because it may not have authors. For example, here you use one to two words from the title of the website in the in-text citation as well as the publication year or copyright year. And then in the end citation, you start with the title of the website. Now you can look at this citation and think about what the in-text citation would be. You can pause the video if you need more time to think. And the in-text citation would be Wooding 2006. This is the library guide for Foundations of Biology Lab. Here are the sciences librarians listed with their contact information so you can email us or call us if you have any questions. On the right here are the top five things to know about the sciences library. You can connect with us on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. We have a scanner at the sciences library so you can scan files and then save them to USB or email them. We have comfortable study spaces at the library. We have booths, carrels, large tables. We have computer stations. The Sciences Library is located on Iowa Avenue to, on the west side of the biology building. And we have a mascot, a gorilla named Chauncey. And then this explains how to set up a research consultation. There is a web form you could fill out or you can just email us or call us. This tab gives you some helpful information for your project one and three writing assignments. We do have at the Sciences Library copies of a student handbook for writing in biology on reserve that you can check out. We have scientific style and format as an ebook. So here's a link. You can read the full text of that online. And this middle section talks about how to present your data in graphs with figure legends for your lab report. You will want to label all of your axes, include any units that you have for measurements, define all of your symbols, give each graph a unique figure number and a caption below the graph. For line graphs, you put the independent variable on the x-axis and dependent variable on the y-axis. And then for lab reports or other documents that might be printed out, it's recommended that you use black and white graphs. And then you can use graphs with color for posters and presentations. So here's an example of a line graph. And here is a simple example of a bar graph. This tab about searching literature has links to recommended databases for you to use to look for articles. There's InfoHawk Plus, PubMed, Web of Science, Scopus. We also have another biology database listed here, Faculty Opinions, that you can use. And 
this gives you tips on developing your literature search strategy. This talks about the difference between primary and secondary literature. Primary references are original research articles. They have the methodology and experimental results. And secondary references are textbooks, encyclopedias, popular magazine articles, and they have a general description of the results. And Boolean operators are and or not. These can be helpful when you are searching databases. It's helpful to know how a scientific paper is organized. There are standard sections. There's the introduction, the materials and methods section, the results section, and the discussion section. And it's helpful to know what kind of information you'll find in each section. So here's an example paper. Here's the journal title, the article title, the authors. The abstract is a short summary of the article. This is just a paragraph. The purpose of the article you can usually find in the introduction. This paper describes a method using DNA polymerase, which makes use of inhibitors that terminate the newly synthesized chains at specific residues. And then here in the method section, you'll find a description of how the experiment was done and any materials used for the experiment. And this is meant to be detailed enough that someone else could carry out the experiment. Any graphs and figures in the papers, scientific papers are very helpful. You can read the caption to understand them. So the DNA sequence is written from left to right and upwards beside the corresponding bands on the radio autograph. So these can be helpful. Uh, to help you understand an article's purpose. This is about DNA sequencing, and here you can see the DNA sequences. The results section is a summary of what was found. So uh, the use of a method for determining sequences in the DNA, and then a discussion will be an interpretation of what was found, why it's important. So this DNA sequencing method is simpler, more clear cut, and uh, can be read further. So that's a little bit about navigating a scientific article. Once you have an article that you want to talk about in your paper, you will need to cite it. And in your lab report, you'll use CSC name year. Here are some examples of in-text and end citations. The in-text citation goes in the body of your paper and the end citation at the end of your paper. And there are some tips for your project to team presentation. So there are sources for free images that you could search and use in your presentation, some tips for creating your presentation slides, tips for practicing your presentation, and also if you do use an image in your presentation, how to give attribution for that image. So again, Please reach out to one of the sciences librarians if you need any help with your project assignments in Foundations of Biology Lab and good luck.